Abby Clark is a two-time Strongest Ninja champion. This also her seventh uh, world championship, along with Jesse LeBrec. And she is representing Team Monstro. Shout out, Monstro. Started competing back in Season 2, has not missed a world championship since then. And uh, has made it to the end of Stage 1 the last two consecutive years and fallen on the final obstacle. 2021, it was splat a lot. 2022, aerial barrel. We'll see what happens if she can get to throw back, if she can finally break her curse. A minute 45 for women, some modified rules as well. Let's see if Abby Clark could be a very deserving third woman through stage one. Looking to make some history here. Abby Clark kind of kicked the rope. I think it might have made her take one extra swing just to be safe, but not really doing much to her time either. That only took maybe a second off. Oh! Okay, she's through. She's through. And that's good news because I have described Abby Clark's like stage three abilities as a cheat code. She is incredibly strong. She has incredible power. And look at this. Right through. Flawless. Great pull here. Great pull. Could have gotten the blue if she wanted it. Often to go for the safer route. I, I mean, yes, you, you absolutely should do that. And it looks like if she clears this, she'll be in first for the women, if I'm not mistaken. And she does. All right. Here we go. Offering chalk. Abby doesn't go for it. She just wants to throw back. Is the third time the charm to be the third pro woman clear. Going to have to pop it down. She but can. she does, 25 seconds. She does have a little bit of momentum. And you know what? She could dismount from that cliffhanger as well. Yeah, absolutely. I saw people do it in the pro males. The teams were also doing it. And they don't miss the very same rig. Here we go. For history, in eyesight, Abby Clark yes! is the third pro woman to beat stage one. Seventh time's the charm. Third time's the charm on the last obstacle. And Abby the Clark has broken every single curse she's had in the world championship with this. World. And how deserving is it to be Abby Clark to break the mold? Well, I will let you recover while I pass the microphone back to Matt Bradley, who's joining us for Addy Herman. Hello, very excited to come to Addy. Addy is one of the strongest female ninjas period. So this is Awesome run. I think this course is really good for her. Maddie is so explosive, and there's so many explosive movements on this course. I think she's gonna tear it. She made it all the way to the very end of stage one a year ago. Also won the championship back in 2019 in Hartford. So far, into stage three in the team division. Oh, good save, good save. There we go. Time's looking good so far. Make our way around. Addy, Addy wanted that buzzer so bad last year. Looking to join her fellow Jerseyite, Abby Clark. Jerseyite, she's from Massachusetts. <laughs> Looking to join her fellow northeast corner of the country, Abby Clark. Addy we'll fix it in post. Addy absolutely destroyed that slider. That's like her favorite move to do on her. She loves to just go up those DTS sliders like that. Addy with 47 seconds left. Going this would time. easily be the fastest time. Plenty of time, Addy. Let's go, Addy. Come on, bring your move. All right, well, doesn't want to repeat a last year. She does get the cliff ledges. First toss. Yes. So Has the momentum. Has the momentum. Gets up to the second. That was easy. Is she going to dismount from here or go for the bar? No, she's going for the dismount. And Addy, Addy Herman is going to join Abby Clark on stage two for the first time in World Ninja League history. We're going to have a showdown on stage two for the elite female division tomorrow. Do not miss it. What do, you, what do you think about that before you go celebrate? Dude, that was so awesome. I'm so 
so glad to see more females in buzzers. That's so great. That's what we need. I completely agree. Thank you very much, Matt. I have never seen a ninja so determined on the start line. That is a game fix. The quest for a three-peat is coming down to a rerun. Here goes Isabella Wake. Almost too nervous to speak. On the sky swings. One pop, and here we go. Great moves. One more to be safe. There we go. She knows that she's going to have time also. So, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, I feel like that was even smoother than last time. Reaching up. Definitely has time on her side right now. A minute five going through the first part of the launch. This is definitely faster than she was before. Uh, well, the bar is thankfully still there. See her breathing as hard as she possibly can. There we go. Okay. And she has insane grip strength. Hopefully it holds out here on Hexagon Habit. She was wrapping her thumbs around the edges there, really making sure that she wasn't going to make any careless mistakes. That's the type of uh, attention to detail we like to see here. And with 30 seconds, this is right around, right around where she was the first time. Here we go, the rematch. The rematch of destiny. Make sure that those bars are nice. We tightened them during the break. Makes the first. Definitely has time. Actually might have more time on that second handle than she did last time. Is she going to send straight for the she might go for the buzzer. And she does! We have three women on stage two tomorrow. You can breathe a sigh of relief. Oh Isabella Wakeham, the back-to-back -back champ, has hit back-to-back -back buzzers. Which is the second time is the charm on stage one for Isabella. Okay, Ava watching on nervously in the background. Just, I guess, hoping for her spot to you, be You never hope another ninja falls. True. I, Very true. I know placement matters, but I don't think I've ever, even against my own best interest, read for a ninja to fall. Absolutely, yeah. And that is the beauty of the ninja community. Completely. Everyone comes together. And at the end of the day, it's the spirit of the sport. As Madeline moves through the first half of this course quite well, now moving on to Skyhooks, which is, of course... A difficult point, but as our last seeded ninja... Well, I mean, showing are, you, are you sure it was difficult? Madeline just made that look really easy. <laughs> yeah, and Madeline is proving to us why she is the last runner of this, this heat. Makes the hook, and she is on the kaleidoscope with plenty of time. He needs to beat this yeah. obstacle to advance to the Premier Series Finals. Definitely one of our fastest times, taking a bit of extra oh, time. Oh, look at that! She jumped out to the up. second one! Completely legal! Wow! Saving time there, showing the innovation there is incredible. Making the and grab, even with the, uh, the uh, square spinning, and with 48 seconds in the bag, Madeline Medeiros has moved on to the Premier Series Finals and wants more. Wow. What an incredible run. The other ninjas are probably watching on being like, why didn't I do that on fly switch? But Oh, missing. Oh, hey, what? How did she hang strength. on for that long? <laughs> just showing an incredible strength in our elite division. It's just, it, there's nothing else like it. These, these elite ninjas are just on another level. And this obstacle will reach that set. She's got 38 seconds. This is definitely doable, Alex. We've yes. seen ninjas fall on boats before and go on to complete. So hopefully we can see this happen here. Madeline eyeing it up. There she goes. Sticks she got the... this time. Now she's completed this on yes. with a slower time than Abby, which means if she wants to win this competition, she must beat Area 53 and hit that buzzer. And realistically, yes. only has time to do it once. Could have gone on that Good swing. Man. Goes on this swing, though. Gets onto the ring. The foot. Now, Alex, this is, the, this is the turning point. This is the difficult one. Gets that vertical yes. disc. Could she do it? Reaches behind. Spins. And Madeline Medeiros beats the buzzer. 
and wins the premiere series at Ferox. What an incredible run, just demonstrating consistency through both stages and proving to us why she's worthy of being the champion here today. Natalie Medeiros is going to claim the gold medal and the first place prize money, earning her spot in the Premier Series Finals here at Ferox and bursting onto the ninja scene with an incredible performance. The only buzzer in the placement course going on to become the only buzzer in the challenge course. First of all, how she hung on for this long, I have no idea. <laughs> but gets it on the second attempt. Only needed one attempt, though, on Area 53. An obstacle that only one other competitor even got to. Just all round an incredible, incredible run. And just, just proof in the pudding. But in the meantime, it is Beth Lodge. And after seeing her compatriots go out on that third obstacle... He's got to be at least a little nervous, but she has taken on some of the toughest course. Oh! Okay, she's good. She's good. She's good. <laughs> that had my heart stop there. there for a moment. Nice, nice, uh, nice camera angle, Greg. Ooh. In all seriousness, she is onto the drop side or hanging on for the drop, and moving very smoothly across these holds. Okay, we are being told it's the same distance on those flywheels. But in the meantime, Beth Lodge about to take on this Lachey that none of her fellow elite female competitors could do. Looking to now be the first, and there's still more after it. Absolutely, but Beth Lodge can Perfect. get this done, and she does. So smooth. Now onto the... the it, it doesn't end here. We ask more of these elite division competitors as they go for the second grab. Very good, and now just the squirrel. She's got it! The dismount platform in sight. And Beth Lodge wins Premier Series at True Function. She's ecstatic, but there's more to be done. That's absolutely right, and we're going to see her in the Premier Series Finals in November, which is really exciting to see. But now, yes, as you have just mentioned, she's going to be continuing her work. Five, fifth obstacle now, four to go. Now coming on to Globe Grasper. Let's see how she goes and which technique she takes. Now going for now the going to bar the technique. technique. Very good. Yeah, this is definitely the more efficient approach if you can manage it. And it looks like Beth is doing well so far on this obstacle. As we now come into Pole Grasper, this is a tough one to be truthful, Alex. People were slipping left, right, and center in previous divisions, and let's see how Beth holds up. But she doesn't need to rush either. She should have enough time to beat the rest of this course, and she doesn't have anyone coming up after her. She's already clinched first place. I was going to say so she can use her feet if she wants to, but she doesn't want to. She's going right across no and finishes. There is a rule for the elites and for many of these divisions that they're not allowed to use their feet as a matter oh, of fact. So all upper body. Good catch. But now th this is going to be our chance to look at the new and an improved double spinner. There is going to be an upward slash A that adds to the difficulty of it. These discs spin like crazy. She catches the front. The first grab. But now needs to get out of there. Would have liked to see a wide grab, but she's through. 33 seconds. Unlike the placement course, she's got loads of time to beat this 15-foot wall. Absolutely. But can she get up there? She yes, does. she can. Beth Lodge is seconds. gonna get the buzzer. Amazing. With a 254. Phenomenal run there. Just all round. You know, she has such an incredible reputation in this community. She's known as being one of the best elite females in the world at the moment. And she's proving why by hitting a buzzer. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal effort. We're going to get to take a look at another look at this incredible run here. This was the big one here, the third obstacle. No other woman was able to complete it, but she was able to. And perfection all across this course. The first to beat the new incarnation of the double spinner as well. And she just missed out on the... She had that dive just not in time <laughs> on the placement course. It was well in time on the challenge course. And she finishes in 254. Well done. 
to Beth Lodge. Greg Schwartz, the best in the business, waiting to hand off the trophy to our winner should they make it to the top of the tower. Two ladies that train frequently in the New Jersey area, so they know each other super well from the Northeast Circuit. Obviously, they know each other from last year's race. Who will be this year's champion? Will it be a repeat or will Rachel get revenge? It's time to find out. And they're off onto the road flares. Rachel taking an early lead, but it is early in the race. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite of last year where Rachel's jumping out to the early lead. There we go, onto the first girder. Ava choosing the weight once again. Rachel sizing up that dismount. And she lands it with no problem. Taking no rest this time. She oh, took a wow. bit of rest there last time. And again, the exact opposite. Rachel coming out of the gate hot. I wonder if she realizes that last year that strategy didn't work. Choosing to do something else, maybe hoping Ava makes a mistake. Ava is standing there and choosing to rest, but not take the full rest. So it's going to be interesting to see what plays out. It, it's going to be interesting to see what happens if Rachel makes the rope, if Ava all of a sudden starts going extra fast. Meanwhile, Ava back onto the ring section. She's not fallen yet this week. Oh, Rachel shaky. almost fell there, but she was able to save it on rooftop rumble, only needing one attempt. That could be big. It took Ava four attempts last time. This is true. Now Rachel opting to take a little bit of rest as she finds herself one balance obstacle ahead. I mean, you said a little bit of rest. It's truly a little bit of rest. She She's not really using her rest so far. That's going to be interesting to see how this plays out in our final two obstacles if she gets through this one, of course. In fact, I just noticed Rachel opted for long pants. She has that rope in mind. Yeah, that's a very good point. It's a very good point. Eva making her first attempt and does not make it onto the roof. She swings back to the start. Rachel just completed the Python pitch. She's currently two obstacles ahead. Yep, Ava. Ava getting some advice from her teammates. There we go. Gets it on her second try. Much better this time around for Ava. Did it in half the time, but she's still a full obstacle behind. Almost kind of, once again, gambling and double downing, if you will, on the idea that Rachel is going to fall on the monstro climb. Ava about to begin Python pit. Rachel going to use her full 45 seconds. This is the obstacle she fell on last year in the finals. And honestly, it's a good it's a good move to do the full 45 here. This is an obstacle you need to respect its difficulty. And Rachel is very much respecting it, using the full 45. Truly. On to the first transfer. Run the birdhouse coming around now with that long reach around. This is the biggest gap, but you do get a ring here. She gets a solid I'm already swing. seeing a grimace. Oh, man. This is going to be big, though, if she reaches the rope. Oh, and she not able it. to get it. She got turned around there. Wasn't able to static it like she wanted to. And now it is down to this. Once again, the drama. Ava Colasanti versus the Monster Climb. It worked a bit ago. Now this one's for the championship. Will the double down pay big for Ava? She did it once before. Can she do it again? She's resting. Rachel can only sit there and wait to see what happens. The championship is on the line right now. All on this. Ava's beaten it today. She beat it yesterday. But this obstacle is unforgiving. We've just seen Rachel, who's very capable of beating it, fail it. Now across the gap. And this is the bunny hop. She makes the gap, but she still has to pull up to the roof. How much energy does she have left? That she does much it. at least, she's got it. Ava Colasanti repeats as Gauntlet Champion. And now we find out if Ava is able to make it to the buzzer. She wants, she wants to meet that trophy while she is dry. She wants to say, hello, Mr. Trophy. Good to see you again. Remember me, I'm Ava Colasanti, the one who won last year, and I just won you again. Well, she's claimed the trophy, but a bigger prize only about 10 feet away, shaking out how much energy is left in those forearms. Uh, last year, she got so close to completing the course. She wants to do it on the main stage in the final round. What a way to cap off our tournament for the Gauntlet 2022 Championship. Within reach! Oh, she's got a There it is! Ava Colasanti in 4.15.
426 over a minute faster than yesterday. And there you have it, folks. Ava Colasanti, once again, your 2022 gauntlet champion. She repeats, goes back to back, completes the course, her best performance yet. And right there, she gets to admire her shiny trophy once again. It will say Ava Colasanti twice on the leaderboard for winners.